please welcome the astonishing Tori Birch. Hi. Um, wow, thank you for your nice words. I'm so honored to be here today, and I want to thank Women's Wear for inviting me to talk about our journey with social media. It's a journey that we are still on and will be on for a long time. Uh, I find it particularly ironic because I'm always referred to as being technologically unfit by my children, so I was very proud to come home and tell them that I was doing this. Uh, it's amazing to me how social media moves so quickly, how a conversation among friends can have a ripple effect. It's interesting, after leaving uh, our rehearsal here on Friday, my team and I were joking about words that we call non-words. Actually, they are non-words, things that bother us. And I was saying, irregardless, drives me crazy. So we put it out on Twitter, what non-words bug you? People responded within seconds, and wow, we thought maybe we should do our favorite non-word of the week, and it was quite amusing to see it. This is the age of social media. We at Tory Burch have benefited from growing up in it. Uh, to put it in perspective, we launched our company in 2004, right around the same time as Facebook. My vision was to create a luxury brand that was accessible, but also had a sense of social responsibility. We had a three-year plan of five stores. I could never have imagined that seven years later, we would have 61 stores globally and a foundation that empowers women through microfinance. I'm so grateful for what we have achieved so far, and social media has, had, has been critical to that growth. It's how we communicate with our customer and how she, in turn, is helping us build our brand. It's an integral part of our narrative. While we may not have the biggest following in the industry, we have built a passionate community. We have built one that has a two-way conversation every day. It's also another way that we would meet people that we wouldn't ordinarily meet. I actually became friends with comedian Mindy Cowling over Twitter. One day out of the blue, she tweeted, I love you, Tori Birch, you closeted, bling-loving Indian woman you. I had to respond. I soon engaged in my first Twitter relationship, which in fact has grown, and we became friends, and two weeks ago hosted uh, the, her book party at our Madison Avenue store. We have always been about this kind of organic connection, and it really has worked for us. Our customers also give us a unique opportunity to learn more about our business. Through their comments and pictures, we see our brand through many different lenses. It's a way of hearing what people around the world are talking about us and our company. We know instantly when there's a salesperson who's extraordinary. We know when someone's frustrated over not being able to find correct sizing. And we know when their celebrity is wearing some of our collection. Our fans are a vital part of what we are doing. And they will even let us know when there's a counterfeit site. We have dealt with rogue sites and unauthorized dealers by investing in online media, particularly for paid searches on Google. If our customer is searching for our Selma boot, we want her to find it through us or one of our authorized partners. We launched our Facebook page back in December 2008 and Twitter soon after. We learned early on that posts have to be in our own voice. They can't be forced, promotional, or boring. People respond to authenticity. And I know that authenticity is an overused word. And I put it on Twitter. I said, is the word authentic overused? And within seconds, it was a resounding yes. But it is true. People know when you're being honest and real. One of the things that we have learned to help us be successful is to invest time and resources in building an outstanding team, one that embraces social media and the culture of our company. All of our content is written, designed, and managed in-house. I tweet myself. I like the direct contact with our customer. I like the immediate feedback. I'll post anything from fishing with my boys at 6 in the morning to a great new, new book to my favorite Mark Twain quote. And I retweet if I think something's very important. Our Facebook page is a team effort, and all of the company is contributing. We post pictures of our employees getting ready for a marathon or our favorite ice cream flavors. 
And we also discovered that people really want commentary on everyday life. Our blog is about sharing things that inspire us and entertain us. We cover people that we admire, whether it's an artist, a musician, an author, or even other designers. I personally don't wear any designer head to toe. Uh, I don't even wear Tory Burch head to toe, as I'm always told by many people. Um, I think it's much more interesting to mix it up, and really that's my philosophy with our blog. For us, social media is, being about, is about being in the moment. When I was in JFK one day, I was walking through, the, getting ready to check in to security, and I had to take my socks off, and I put on Twitter, is it me, or is everyone grossed out going barefoot through airport security? Should I design a line of travel socks? Within, <laughs> Within uh, a few minutes, we had an overwhelming response of people that were equally grossed out. And a few months later, we offered our travel sock. To date, we have sold through our inventory. Off-the-cuff moments are the most powerful. When something happens in the news, like new statistics about microfinance and women entrepreneurs, it really resonates. It's an intuitive way for us to raise awareness about what we are doing with the Tory Burch Foundation. People also love to know what's happening in our office. When we hosted a baby shower for five of our employees, we posted a picture of their cake. It got hundreds of likes and comments, and I cannot tell you how many resumes I got of people offering to fill in for them when they were on maternity leave. <laughs> when a Facebook fan asked how much she could fit into one of her clutches, someone in our office had the same clutch and immediately posted what she had in hers. This quick response not only answered one customer's question, but also prompted many others to buy it. We choose to be an open brand, and that means really being able to accept the good with the bad. I, I, I guess one thing that I learned from my mother when I first started the company is she said, you're going to need to thicken your skin and have a lot of resilience. We are, we, when, we handle, when we look at criticism, we know that we have to handle it in a very, very public forum. I was reminded of my mother's advice when earlier this year, we were implemented a new system in our warehouse. We hadn't given ourselves enough time to work out the kinks. As a result, everything was backed up. There was no transparency on some of the orders. Some were canceled altogether. It was an absolute nightmare and one of the first big challenges that I have faced in this company. The negative comments mounted on Facebook and Twitter, but rather than taking them down, we chose to be completely honest about what was happening. Our social media team reached out to anyone who posted a neg negative comment and even went to the warehouse to start fulfilling orders. We explained the situation and people understood and appreciated our honesty. In turn, they became our brand advocates, and they helped us get through this bad situation. We have evolved e-commerce over time, and also our blog, and each time we're thinking about how we can improve the design and also improve the customer's experience. Like our boutiques, ToriBirch.com transports our customer into our world. They can shop quickly or efficiently, or they can stay a while. We've created one destination where commerce meets content, and social media puts everything into real time. Our homepage features a live ticker tape of our Twitter feed and news slots that are fed by original stories from the blog. Content is integrated with the shopping experience. When a customer looks at a coat on a product page, we include a link to a relevant story on our blog. It could be a vintage shot of my mother in a look that inspired that coat or a photo shoot that, on how to wear it. We want our fans to experience what we are experiencing. For our first runway show in September, we posted behind the scene images a few times a day. The blog gave them backstage access in the moments leading up to the show. And then we streamed it live on our homepage. We had a great, great response. We launched new products by telling the story behind them and we avoid gratuitous promotions just to get our numbers up. For instance, we recently launched our 797 handbag collection. We did that to celebrate our, seven, our new Madison Avenue shop on 797 Madison Avenue. 
Before the opening, we talked about what inspired the collection, the decor of the store, and how I love the history of the address. It was a diner I used to frequent with my children. Our customers loved the narrative and helped position our Madison store to be the strongest to date, one of the strongest to date, and the 797 handbag collection, one of our most successful. On our blog, we profile anyone or anything that we're talking about right now. Charlie Rose talks about how he keeps conversations going. Christy Turlington talks about her philanthropic efforts. Marissa Berenson told us what it was like to work with Yves Saint Laurent. And Mario Vitale gave us some killer menus with recipes, and people love that post for sure. Another one of our most popular features is our tastemaker's guide. Early every, mo every Mother's Day, we ask people we admire to share favorite pictures, stories, and advice from their mothers. It opened up a whole conversation with our readers who also wanted to share their experience and stories. We spotlight people that we think have unique style, like Anna Del Russo. We spotlight blogger Hannah Lee. When we photograph them, we say, you don't have to wear Tory Burch, and if they don't, we link to anyone that they mention. Uh, they do wear it, though. They are wearing it, but we don't, we don't make that a prerequisite. We are curious about new technology, innovations, and new social sites. We want to understand our customer and what she is using, whether it's Foursquare, Flipboard, or something we haven't heard of yet. We don't just do something for the sake of doing it. We've been fine-tuning our app for a year so that it reflects the mix of commerce and content of ToryBirch.com. We took our time creating our Tumblr page because we wanted it to be unique and different from the blog and other sites. Our mobile site launched earlier this year, and we are thinking about a Pinterest page. We're all very excited that Google announced that Google Plus will be opening up to brands. In May, we created our Facebook shopping page as a way to say thank you to our existing fans. And we believe that social shopping, or f-commerce as my team calls it, is the future of e-commerce. By embracing it early, we have time to test it and tweak it. Basically, every aspect and growth has been about being patient enough to know when the timing is right. Our company really thinks about how we can always be fearless and try new things. We waited until our store in Beijing opened to launch Senior Weibo, China's version of Twitter and Facebook. This is our way of going into China and really giving them something to learn about our story, but it also relates back to them. This kind of thinking has been critical for us as we expand our business and introduce ourselves into internationally into new territories. Each one is so different. Creating this close relationship with our customer has not only impacted our business, but has also sparked larger philanthropic ideas. I'd like to end by sharing a story. When the earthquake and tsunami devastated Japan and the Pacific earlier this year, we quickly created a blog and we posted a, a picture of something that shared, showed how we shared their grief. The graphic was of hearts and the, and the Japanese sun. One of our blog readers posted that that should be a t-shirt. Another said that we should donate the proceeds to Japan. Within days, we were able to announce our special edition Japanese relief t-shirt that 100% of the net proceeds went to the Japanese Red Cross. Through our boutiques, ToriBirch.com, and a partnership with Rue Lala, we were able to sell over 16,000 t-shirts globally. It's one of these moments when we realize just how deeply social media impacts our brand, and in how, if we speak to her, our customer will help us do something incredible. I'd like to thank you very much, and I'm very open to taking questions. Here's our question from our Facebook uh, audience. 
what's the next big thing? And are you experimenting with other technologies or platforms such as Google Plus and Instagram? Uh, we, you know, the next big thing right now we're thinking about is, is Pinterest. And, and one thing I would say about our team is that we are always taking meetings and always interested in what's new. Uh, that said, we don't want to jump on the bandwagon with everything. Uh, Google Plus is something that will be of interest for sure. And uh, Instagram to me is uh, just from a visual standpoint. I don't know if everyone knows what that is, but it's photographs and it's really amazing. We haven't done that yet, but we are also interested in that. But there's things that come along every day, so we will look at it and evaluate it and see where we want to go. The, uh, Tori, this, this thing's actually working. There are people, <laughs> but here's, here's uh, one that popped up, and this is, this is not me, this is actually the person from Facebook. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm a shoe designer looking to uh, break into the footwear industry. Do you have advice or suggestions for using social media as a platform to raise brand awareness for young people breaking into the business? Well, I think it's key for young people to break into the business to utilize social media. It's a way that you don't have to invest a lot of money and you can be creative and you can create your own community to learn about your product. Uh, when we first started, we certainly didn't have a budget for advertising, marketing. Uh, and that was very much how we, we began. Uh, eight years ago, social media wasn't a big thing, but we started e-commerce uh, when we launched our first store on Elizabeth Street. So I would suggest to any new entrepreneur who's starting a business to really utilize social media to help them uh, build it. Sorry, it's Kim Vernon. Hi, Kim. Um, you make it sound really easy the, and romantic, the way you moved into social media, and I know that it's a lot of work. Can you tell us currently how you structure and what kind of people you have working daily in the company to achieve all of this? Uh, well, we have an incredible team, and I think that's how I get it done, is it, really through them. And uh, we, it's not a big team, but I think it's a passionate team about social media, and it's really um, people that are interested in hearing about all everything new and always taking meetings and, and really looking at it and thinking about would that be a good fit for our company. Uh, we have, but also we have two people that work specifically on social media, but then we have our marketing team that contributes. We have our PR team that contributes. So it really is a group effort. Um, and we leave it that way, open for people to come and give us ideas and once they hear of new things and new exhibits, new books. And really, it is for us all about original content. And so it's constant. We're constantly trying to uh, give our consumer and our reader, is how we look at it, new, new materials to look at. Uh, I, I have a question here from New York, New York. The, uh, this question is from Liftlux. In regards to f-commerce, do you feel it's important for younger companies, brands, or designers to make their products available everywhere, or do you think it's best to wait until you have more of a customer base, loyal following, before expanding into multi-channel distribution? So I would say definitely don't be available everywhere to start. I would um, think that you would really need to build your business slowly, strategically, F-commerce I do believe in, and I think that when we launched it, we saw a great response. It's something that is also a way to uh, really say thank you to your Facebook fans, and that's something they really appreciate. We can judge that it is successful by how we do exclusive product for Facebook, and, and it really does well. So that's how we know that it works. But I would say do not spread yourself too thin. So that's again, as we uh, do start to look at our business more globally, when we went into China, we wanted to wait until our Beijing store opened before we launched our senior Weibo. Uh, I think it's important uh, to really have some presence before you start doing social media in different places. Although one thing I learned about Facebook is that 70% of Facebook uh, users are out of the US. So that is obviously a very global platform. 
Here's something from Baltimore. Just came in. <laughs> Where do you find that you best interact with interact with fans? Oh gosh, I think definitely uh, in the U.S. We have a, a lot of interaction. One thing that I'm very surprised at that I learned is that a lot from Korea is our number uh, two market. Um, hi, my name is Melissa. Um, how do you keep your social media branding in between each of these individual, like Twitter and, and Tumblr and Facebook and your blog, how do you keep them individual and unique? Or are you kind of bringing them all together to keep the same message spread? Well, I think it's, it, it is one voice, but I think they all are different, and I think that's the point. When we decided to do Tumblr, we wanted it to be different uh, from what we did on the blog. We always want to surprise our audiences and, and offer them something unique. Twitter, I do personally, uh, and that's something that I learned early on. We started with Twitter, and it was way too promotional, and I got several calls from good friends who said, you're doing it completely wrong, and you gotta change it or don't do it. And I really spent a week, and I got a book on Twitter and learned about what Twitter was. And um, what it is is that people want an authentic, conversation. They don't want boring promotions. And so that's something that is very different. And then Facebook really is a group effort. It's my team that really uh, contributes. So it's all one voice and one point of view, but it's very different. I hope that makes sense. The, uh, this is very cool. Something just showed up from Taiwan. Uh, but I'm going to ask you this. Have you thought about designing clothing for the seated figure? For the what figure? Seated figure. I don't know. Hmm. Seated figure. S e a t e d. Seated figure. Seated. Sitting down. Seated. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, honestly, no. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I will if I know what it is. <laughs> There's one from uh, Northern High School, but I'm not quite sure where that is. <clears throat> what is your favorite form of social media, and why? Well, it's, it is Twitter for me because uh, it's you hear immediately feedback on issues with product or fit or great things. So it's such an um, interesting window into your business that I don't think we've ever had before. Um, it, it get the impression of this big, colorful, orchestrated mass that you've uh, kind of created with these different uh, techniques that you've managed to pull together. Um, and possibly what was a, a, originally a random way, but has come together very strong, strongly. But what about the traditional stuff, like your e-commerce site and, and uh, da email database for customers? What about the traditional um, digital tools? Are they still relevant at all? Oh, very, very relevant, um, of course. Uh, E-commerce is, uh, we look at that as our number one store, and it's a store that doesn't really have a limit. To me, that's a very exciting aspect of our business, and, and something that we're constantly looking at how we can make that better. And we have evolved it, we relaunched it again this year, and we're always interested in, in how we can really make that really as strong as possible. Uh, and also emails as well. Email, we do email blasts, and uh, we, we're careful with it. We don't want to be annoying about it. We, I don't love getting personally getting a ton of emails all the time from different designers or brands or anything. So um, we want to do it uh, in the most courteous way and also impactful way. Hi. Um, how many of your employees participate in either Facebook posts or Twitter posts? Is it everybody? Do you have a team of people, 10 people, 12 people, who just are sort of assigned to that? Or do you ask everyone to play? I would like everyone to play, but that, I, I don't know that everyone plays. We have a very open door policy in my office. And 
Um, we have maybe, let's say, 10 people, marketing, PR, specifically social media people that do it, but we're open to any suggestions. And um, actually, the Japanese t-shirt came from one of our computer designers who, who put that graphic up. So um, we, we have a very collaborative office, so we try to engage as many people as possible. When you have a mini crisis, like the fulfillment issue you were talking about, does everyone get involved at that point? It looked like you had people from the executive office who were down there at, at the warehouse. Uh, yes, I was down there on Sunday nights too. It really was a big problem, and it was a problem that was all of our problems, so we all helped out.